And it looks like it's a large map. Sacrifices, questions, and answers three. Uh, bonus FP. Okay, I guess that's fine. Oji Kita Ward. The true guilds of the East and West both have erected walls. This militarized border is the front line of the battle for Tokyo. In the shortest time since the Guild Master of the Summers was captured, clashes have already begun to break out. Get moving, Mongols! They can't kill us all! Charge! Cold Scott morning! <laughs> Corbuker, controller of the Ojimachi Academy portal and world representative Kamui Kotan, wrecks havoc across the battlefield with his sacred artifact. A stroll allows Corbuker to draw a boundary beyond which nothing can grow and no one can cross. <laughs> Cold! My body's freezing! The giants of the Warmongers are crushed by the force of the sudden blizzard, but this is not the end. My friends, let us avenge your fallen comrade. Second wave, charge! The soldiers who follow charge toward the enemy lines over the bodies of their fellows, only spurred on by their sacrifices. I thought they were gonna have a discussion, not just go out and all front war. Oh wow, they're literally all here. Let us all back for now. I refuse to fight for a moment longer in this quagmire. Curse these warmongers. Always a sword on your side. The battle between the three true goats has yet to reach each its final stages. For the moment, clashes between them are all confined to outbells, so soldiers who fall will rise again. However, the warmonger's determination is still very real. That's is still no less painful in the app battle, yet they should sh show no fear. Even the other two true gods wouldn't be so uh, would be hard pressed to outdo their fighting spirit. And this spirit is supported by the network connecting each soldier to their comrades, just like a spider web. Such is the system of Tuscali Pocus homeworld, El Dorado, a world that practices faith through sacrifice. Yes, the world system compels its inhabitants to sacrifice themselves in battle. Yet another sacrifice ascends to the altar to lay down his life for El Dorado. Amigo! His beating heart is torn from his chest, proclaiming his courage and self sacrifice to all, and joy fills his face as he falls. Ugh. The black sun above accepts his offering and blazes all the brighter. In exchange, it grants its champion a replacement for the body he has lost. Black smoke snakes into his corpse, fills his chest, and begins to beat in place of his lost heart. Amigo! The common folk watch, enraptured as he rises and strikes the gallant pose. Eres increíble, hombre tigre! Viva! The crowd erupts into cheers for the display of heroism. Thanks to his sacrifice, their world will continue to turn. They push and shove to be the one to follow him to the altar. From above, the sun gazes down upon it all. Do you see the meaning in this? Look around you. All desire to be understood. Everyone craves recognition from others. In such a world, self-sacrifice is the ultimate means to achieving validation. Who would offer the fruits of their labor? They would be scorned for anyone could make such a sacrifice. Who would offer the wealth of their pockets? They would be scorned, for true honor cannot be bought. Hmm. I see. So this is an interesting sort of perspective he's offering, which is why sacrifice might be more noble than any kind of other sacrifice. Uh, well, you know, a life sacrifice as opposed to a sacrifice of coin or of labor. A loss that can be recoupled will not suffice. True sacrifice calls for something more permanent. But an offering of one's own flesh and blood? That is beyond reproach. Only such a sacrifice can provide true validation. My mirrors reflect the bodies of those fallen heroes through every corner of this tiny world. And in their fellow moments, they feel true acceptance as the crowds cheer the name.
I am the world representative of the glittering city of El Dorado. You may call me Tuscali Puka, the smoke king here. <laughs> so we finally meet. You're the one in charge here. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Gorilla, that's Tuscali Puka. El Sol Gigante, a super estrella. The luchadors greet uh, Tuscali Puka's arrival with mighty cheer. Mm. Fernand's eyes burn with a fierce emotion as he gazes at Tuscali Puka. Although you cannot quite discern its shade. Hanatenshi Academy, Danger Zone. Western Tokyo. Commencing record of world representative to Scotty Poka. The commander is blessed with admiring followers, but this fervor seems to be above and beyond their call to duty. <laughs> How long has it been? Finally, we are reunited. My other half, my dearest friend, my beloved Kitsal Kowaddle. Kitsal Kowaddle? Didn't Shalal mention that name? Hold on for the list. Whoa. Why? No, really? What in the world are you doing here? Why are you here, Kutsalkoano? And every motion of your hands, every twitch of your lips, I see Kutsalkoano! You must be talking of another exile. Kutsalkoano, Kutsalkoano, you've got the wrong person. I waited for so long. For you, my other half. Always for you. You've been waiting? Why do you try to get me to leave? I know nothing of this, my other half. I've been thinking nothing else about our reunion. Okay, that explains why everyone else wanted him to leave, but you know, <laughs> he ended up being detained here instead. Uh, they wanted him to volitionally lead. Um, in fact, they wa wa would have prevented him from entering the area in the first place and prevent this whole entire fight with the street fields. So it was. Uh, to Scotty Polka, who specific, probably specifically requested that he was brought to Penitentiary Academy. Perhaps among our other ranks, or even among role representatives, feel differently. Well, now you've come to me of your own accord, and I have no intention of allowing you such an opportunity to go to waste. After all, I am unable to set foot outside this prison I have created. Mm -hmm. Of all the world representatives, across all the innumerable loops that have taken place in this Tokyo, only rarely have I had the chance to gaze upon your face, my other half. All the more now, so that we are prohibited from all contact but you by these accursed treaties. You are bound to this place. Indeed I am. Why do you think I am dispatched my most prodigal warriors to Kamata? What's that got to do anything? What's so important about the crafters? <laughs> do you not see? Oh, but you do not. How tragic. It grieves me every time to see someone losing memories on the, of the battlefield. But I have no doubt that our coming war will awaken your lost memories once more. The Scotty Poco grins with barely contingly. To hear you declare war upon me of your own volition, you have no idea of the joy it has brought me. Every one of the warmongers will represent those summoned to this turkey by their desire to do battle with you. And I am no exception. Wait, with me? That's seriously a reason? Laugh as you will, my other half. Show me the full extent of your rage. For that reason, I stand before you now, offering you all that I have. You think this is a joke? Let's end this right here, right now. Give it to me, all of it. Ah! Uh, <laughs> how splendid you shine! Look how you bristle with rage. <laughs> yet I cannot help but lament for the anger coursing through you. It does not yet reach the heights of demand of our war. Hmm, I wonder why he's restrained there. The only other time we, we knew of other people being restrained is through battle zones. Not really through any other means. Please, Goodbye, Tuscali Poka. <laughs> 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 Goodbye, Tuscali Poka. 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 Goodbye, 
Both Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca once blazed brightly in El Dorado skies, illuminating a world where faith is placed in sacrifice. But in truth, these brothers' sons have one more sibling, Shalotl, now of the Roponigi Tycoons. When the time came for Shalotl to give his life, he grew afraid and fled. Oh... I'm starting to understand. <laughs> yeah, that's why his entire character is surrounded around fear. It's really it's the sacrifice of his life for the world to keep on persisting. That's crazy. Man, sucks to be born in his world. And as terror, he cried so hard that his tears washed his eyeballs from their sockets. Oh, wow. Just <laughs> dang. <laughs> However, Shalal bore no resentment towards his brothers for forcing him to, to the altar. He felt only the same he has always felt, hopelessly inferior. How could he ever presume to hate them knowing how much Tezcatlipoca, his own brother, had sacrificed? Hmm. The figures who now prowl the streets of Rapongi were once members of the Tycoons. Now they pursue the remnants of their former guilds as though possessed. With thoughts addled by hypnosis and mind corrupted by invading memories, they mercilessly hunt down their own comrades. <laughs> Now's my chance! Shlottle Sprint! You don't just yell out what you're doing and that makes it a superpower. <laughs> okay, maybe he, it is a superpower if you didn't notice that. <laughs> Never again. I was so scared that I thought I'd have to- a heart attack! Under the secret order of Hawkman, Shalala ducks and dives through the back alleys of Rapongi. His former guildmates pro patrol the streets, but thanks to his newly acquired street a secret weapon, he has gone undetected. Oh, his eyes! Without his, his new pair of eyes, an artificial, artificial sacred artifact unknown to the invaders, he would have been caught long ago. These amazing! I can see better than ever! I can never thank Mr. Hawkman or the crafters enough! Shalotl's new eyes adapted to his body as naturally as if they had always been a part of it. Out of all the masterpieces the crafters had produced in their long history of researching the technology of all 24 worlds, this particular piece is among their finest. Oh yeah, now I remember! Matsumara mentioned that, I think. Back in Kamata, Matsumara explained that the dark matter sacred artifacts are made of is very similar to tra transient bodies. Dark matter sacred artifacts are made of... Well, yeah, sacred artifacts are made of dark matter. So are the walls, I think? Uh, the walls of, uh, what's it called? Any battle zone? Hmm. This is why Shalala's ball. Shalala's ball is adapted to his new eyes so readily. Uh, because, uh, I guess they're um, made up, composed of the same material. Scatly Polka did something similar with his warriors using secret artifact, I'm sure. Though he never ever used it on himself. Yeah. Uh oh, wait, maybe. No, there's no way! At that instant, Shalala realizes just why Tuscali Soka sent his soldiers to Utawar to attack the crafters, and why he never made a personal appearance in spite of his clear desire to fight Quetzalcoatl. Yeah! This is bad! This is so bad! Really bad! I've got to kill Quetzalcoatl! I, will, I mean, Arthur! He can't fight Tuscali Poka like this! Exiles! World representatives! None of that matters! Without knowing his secret, he won't stand a chance! Ever! Unfortunately, I think I've been spoiled to what the secret is. <laughs> yes, I'm supposed to hit the mirror first! <laughs> My god. Do people not know what the spoiler channel is for? Your sword pierces through Tuscali Poker's body much more easily than you would have imagined, scaring him with no resistance. What the? Did I just win? Oh, it's that easy. <laughs> oh, my other half, you disappoint me. That is not what I sought from you, not a simple exchange of blows. I demand war for armies crushing up, clashing upon a field battle for death and ruin that cannot be undone. This Poka's body comes apart as he speaks, unraveling into fine black threads like spider silk. Your sword had appeared to skewer him, but it, had in it has in fact passed harmlessly between the threads. What in the... Here, this trick again. Yeah. 
Does Kali Poco's laughter echo throughout the darkness of the Potential Academy? These are the same spider threads that puppeteered Omri Tigre and the Luchadors during your battle in Ultra Ward. And the same threads that wound around the black spiders you fought not an hour ago, running them puppets of darkness. What in the Lord's name? The black threads bind your limbs to prevent you from moving. <sighs> You're kidding me! Your whole body's made of this string? Yeah, you got him! That's our Super Estrella! We'd love you, Tescali Puka! The reason the citizens of El Dorado are so fervently worshipped Tescali was plain to see. To whom should their faith have been directed, if not their greatest warrior? I see. So, they believe in sacrifice, but to whom that sacrifice goes to uh, is a different strain in itself. Uh, it's basically just, uh, I guess, uh, whoever's the strongest. Damn it! Sp spider threads! Shannon clutches his gut and the viscera of sacred fact within, drowning as they are tormented by some phantom pain. I feel like he mentioned spider threads at one point. Are you truly surprised? I am Tuscali Poka, and the face of all El Dorado flows to me. You have made offerings of your organs, your eyes, your limbs, child's play! You know nothing of true sacrifice. My right leg, my heart, my entire body! I gave up all of myself long ago. Do you understand, my other half? I have no mortal flesh left for the, your sore to rend. <laughs> You're kidding me! You don't have a body? You're supposed to hit the mirror? The rules of war, one. Shortly prior to you, R19 and Jacob being captured and incarcerated. In the special containment unit in the heart of Penitentia, the Scotty Polka is deep in conversation. So that is the truth of it. I did wonder why you would abandon your skull and seek refuge in Penitentia. Or rather, what circumstances would force you to do so? The man conversing with the Scotty Polka nods in acknowledgement. You are wise to turn to me before any other world representative. For a while we walk different paths and serve different goals, the ends we desire are one and the same. By the role of El Dorado has granted me, I am both banisher and banished. In this sense, perhaps I can find common ground with an exile such as you. Why are they censoring Mononobi? We've already seen his face. Very well, I can see our objectives align. I will allow you to hide away in solitary confinement for as long as you wish. Is that Mononobi? Maybe it's something like OC shapeshifting? Maybe it's Break. <laughs> What's happening now? This Kali Poku's shadow fires out black wires and entangles you and your friends in an instant. Someone's venom fetishes signaling off right now in the distance. With long spindly legs sprouting from his black and black, uh, Back in black threads spraying from his mouth. The Therian's silhouette resembles an enormous arachnid. He's a giant spider? Is that your true form? So naive, my other half. I have no true form. I lost my body long ago. I may assume the guy's a majestic jaguar or a giant spider, but these are mere memories conjured from smoke. My right leg, my heart, my eyes. Everything! I sacrificed everything I had to El Dorado! Do you understand of my other half? I have no mortal flesh left for your sore to rent. His right leg. No, it looks no different from his left leg. Then again, his entire body spikes or whatever. This is the secret behind Scott Lee Poker's inability to step outside the bounds of Penitentiary Academy. As well as the true reason he defied the treaty between the three true goats in order to, to, to order an attack upon Kamata. Other than having the crafters create a body for him to inhabit, there is no way he can ever leave this prison. You sacrificed everything? Your entire body? Then what are you now? So he's not able to leave without a body? That, I mean, he seems to be able to leave with the smoke. I don't know why his smoke can't just leave. So it would seem. You have given up more than just your eyes or your limbs or your entrails. Your entire body is gone. Jacob surveil surveys Tuscali Poco with unseeing eyes. 
<laughs> and why should that come as a surprise? This entire academy is built upon self-sacrifice. How could I expect my troops to follow me if I did not lead by example? That ain't something to be proud of. Shang does not think to hide a seething hatred for the disregard of one's own flesh. Oh, but we are so unlike, Doctor. Fellow children of the battlefield, or does the sight of your own reflection displease you? What's that supposed to? I know, Medical Officer Shenong. I know how you grew weary in war and strove to save others through medicine and agriculture. I know you never truly loved the battlefield. All you ever did, you achieved through the sacrifice of your own body. And no matter in what form, or in what world, all who are willing to sacrifice themselves are kin to me. I will tell you this, Doctor. Struggle as you might, you cannot flee from the system of El Dorado. You and your kind can never escape from my grasp. <laughs> Frustrated, Shenong hangs his head. So that is a similarity, even if they're from different worlds. Uh, that is what's binding the, this unit together of the Warmongers. Probably not the entire unit that's like this, but uh, maybe a very large part. <laughs> um, yeah. Have you ever realized the predicament you are in yet? Force will not avail you, my other half. I have no flesh to cut, no bones to break. I have no body but the system of penitentia itself. You're supposed to the mirror. Does that even make sense? You're saying this whole county is your body. Alert. Battlefield analysis complete. Communication ne networks detected. Pattern. Plan B protocol. Conclusion. Cedric's mirror function as data terminals. Hmm. Plan B protocol. Uh, so is he going to break here? Uh, so conclusion, subjects may function as data terms. Analysis indicates they have been mass-produced using utopian technology, displaying detailed results. R19 projects a diagram onto a holographic tomb. It looks almost like an illustration of a circular turn nervous system. Hypothesis. Conclusion. This Katlipoka is an information-based life form. Oh, I see. So he, he is like a, an AI, I guess. You're kidding, right? Then what is that smoke exactly? It is possible for neural activity to exist independently of an organic framework. The network of mirrors constructed by the subject to monitor this academy is modeled after a biological nervous system. As such, it exhibits the capacity for logical operations. Your friend speaks true. As long as penitentiary's network exists, as long as suspicion compels my soldiers to monitor one another. I will persist, fleshless yet undying, within this black spider's web. Do you see now? War, true war, is widespread slaughter driven by a system. That is the war I desire, an all-consuming war that will swallow the whole world. And that, my other half, requires your recollection. Now it is time you remember the true nature of war. Come, my mirror! Engrave my name of Tescatli Paca unto thee. I stand for the endless hordes who sacrifice themselves to war, and thus you too are cards within my system. I am the smoking mirror, and the truth of the past is revealed to me. Dark reflection. Tila Koan. Tescatli Poca's mirror bellows more smoke than ever before, and black light streams from the surface to project visions upon it. Hmm. So the smoke is coming from the mirrors themselves. And black light streams from the surface for the upon it. Oh, I see. And they are also the light source, I guess, uh, manipulating them. Oh, well, yeah. That. So the smoke is merely uh, a medium. Uh, the mirrors are the actual manipulator of those in the smoke. The, just about to hit the mirror. The worm is consumed by an inky cloud. Uh, slowly it turns into a closed space resembling a battle zone. You and your friends are slowly swallowed up by the landscape of the memory, as though you are sinking into pitch black mire. And your memories about to return to you, or rather, they are thrust upon you. <coughs> I can't breathe! <coughs> Smoke's everywhere! I can't see! Wait, there's something in the smoke? As he has done for Taurus masks and countless other inmates, Tiscali Poker re reawakens your memories by force. <laughs> Alright, first memories of slaughtering others and uh, us getting ourselves slaughtered, and now memories of our 
slaughtering others. Jeez. We can't catch break. <laughs> I can't move! R19! Jacob! Are you okay? Are these my memories? Come, my other half! Gaze into the of my mirror and behold your true self! The blast flows, flows, flows into you and your friends' bodies, flexing with the shadows of memories. Allow me to share one last tidbit, my other half. A little something truly awake in your bloodlust. The teacher you are so desperately searching for is being kept in my care, in the heart of the penitentia. No way. Did you just say teacher? You can't mean. Good, good. Let anger course through your veins. And now, my other half, bon voyage. I will be eagerly awaiting your turn. <laughs> The obsidian mirror draws closer, spewing ribbons of black smoke until it fills your vision. Then you, Jacob, and R19 fall into true darkness. Now then, Doctor, perhaps I should have jo you join them on their journey through the past. Accompany them and ensure their safety. For you and your sacred artifact, that should be a simple task. Once more, Tuscali Poker's black sword. That's a pretty interesting transition. <laughs> Tuscali Poker's black sword bellows front and forth and swallows Shen on coal. Ugh, command. No! Damn it! Tuscali Poker, what the hell are you doing? Our metal officer bears responsibility for the well being of our troops, do they not? I'm only following our code, Doctor. And as you said yourself, our code is absolute. Stop. No! Shenong's burning glare remains fixed on Scouty Poker as he vanishes into smoky distance. Addison! Shiro watches as everything transpires via live feed transmitted directly to his friend from R19. He stifles a gas as he watches his friends being swallowed by Tuscali Mocha's mirror in real time. Oh! Did you see that, Shiro? Addison just. Those visions of memories in the smoke. I've seen something like that before. Shiro recalls Tuscali Poka's words, relayed through the speakers just moments before. A particular memory comes to mind, Shinjuku Academy's old school building beneath Shinjuku Park, formerly overseen by Mr. Mononobe. With the guidance of its honorary caretaker, Furufu Urabe, Shiro and his friends discovered the memory stored in its depths. Or, you know, we would if that part was actually translated. Life Wonders, come on, translate the dungeon quest. I'm waiting. There are memories of battle, accumulated over countless loops, an infinite number of visions of a fallen Tokyo. Sometimes destroyed by war, sometimes by conquest, sometimes by tyranny, but always in ruins. The memories they recovered from an old school building were fragmented. Hmm. Am I seeing spoilers right now? God damn it. But Yokes' thoughts opened the gate to those memories and personally witnessed the war that had once consumed Tokyo. Life wonders translate this! So Yokosas opened the gate to those memories and personally witnessed the war that had once consumed Tokyo. So the land itself was keeping those memories, and with Yokosas, they're able to open uh, those memories to be seen. His memories contain little concrete information concerning that he himself claimed to have been sealed away. However, it was clear that they had been born from pain and death that was very real. There could be no doubt that the nightmarish Tokyo they had seen was once very real. Or that, if matters were left to run their course, that nightmare would be fault this Tokyo just the same. Okay, so through the dungeon, they are able to confirm it wasn't just like Hocus Pocus. Uh, the memories they experienced are real. It's not just a, a tactic that's used by the enemy to, you know, deceive them. Hmm. When that battle concludes, the wall light vanishes and everything resets. This automatic reset is a bit like a safety mechanism. However, if a battle were to take place in a battle zone without one, mm, the wall of light vanishes and everything resets. Hmm. As long as the battle zone remains active, nothing will reset. The battle will continue, no matter how many lives are lost. Knowing that, and still leaping right into the dragon's dead. Heh. <laughs> 
You can trust your guild master to always risk everything, no matter what's at stake. Arathen swore he wouldn't let this game loop anymore, and he wouldn't let this awful history repeat itself. If he can do that, then the least I can do as a strategist is believe he will come back safe and sound. Agreed, Shiro. I shall do the same. Rory Tucker's orb glows with the symbol for finally all piety. Uh, piety. He clasps it tightly, his determination clear to see. Mm. He recalls how Yatsufusa, before he fell, had come to treasure the peace that ruled Tokyo streets. And upon that memory, Moritaka swears that the desolation he saw that they will never befall the city again. It's time, Moritaka! We can't let our guildmaster fight this battle alone. Shiro glances down at the message he received from the Kabukicho outlaws. These precious findings, acquired through what remains of the police, could shine a light on the darkness over Penitentia. Understood! Lead the way, Shiro! The pair dashes off, headed for Kabukicho. Kabukicho? Kabukicho. All the while ignorant of the soft light radiating from within Moritaka's orb, which hums as though resonating with its skin. The last thing you remember is the smoke of the scally poco's mirror swallowing you whole. When you come to, you find yourself up in what looks like a crumbling ruins of Tokyo. You've seen this before. This must be a memory of a past loop. This one's different somehow. The sight before you differs from the visions you were once shown by Azathoth, and it does not match the memories you covered from the depths of the old school building library either, the ones that you never actually saw yet. The soldiers milling around you could have been cut from the real world, and that alone tells you this is no fragmented memory. You are looking at the faithful recreation of the past. This is the power of the Scotty Pogues network, the power of a world pillar. You are about to bear witness to the memories of a warmonger's crusade that consumed Tokyo. You are to observe the memories of the Scotty Poka as they play out across the differing smoke of the battlefront. Alright, I guess this is a large map. Portico Tower time. The Rules of War 2. The cherry blossom season. A time for sending off graduates and welcoming new arrivals. We'll soon come again to Shinjiku Academy. In this time of change, a certain teacher's thoughts turn to students, who are in many ways still children. Many students will enter his classroom, and many will set off the p on paths shaped by his guidance. But among them, there will always be one like you. A student who faces their impending graduation racked by doubts about who they truly are. Perhaps you doubt that you'll be able to find happiness in the things the world claims will provide it to you, for you. Perhaps you worry that you do not matter, and that the world will keep on turning without you. Perhaps you have pretended to be someone in order to meet the expectations of others. Perhaps you regret that you have not ever, never been able to find someone to look up to, an example to follow out into the world. No one can generally love themselves when they believe they are irreplaceable. How will you survive in such a world? Will you rail against it and pursue a path of self-destruction? Will you mold yourself into the ideal that others expect of you, becoming someone else entirely? Or will you accept the rules that the world makes for you and live your life on those terms? No, I believe otherwise. Those are not your only choices. Whether I have managed to teach you that lesson remains to be seen. However, I am sure of one thing. What I am about to tell you will seem cruel. It will sound as though I have abandoned you. But even so, or perhaps because of that, I know that you need to hear it.
You must not follow in anybody else's footsteps, including mine. I beg you, do not chase after me, Arthur. The three true guilds have divided Tokyo into three sections. The east, south, and west. No love for true north, strong, and free. The rules of the west are a guild of politicians and war makers whose soldiers would gladly die for the cause. The warmongers. Hmm. The rulers of the south are a guild of conquerors and revolutionaries who stroke, who stoke conspiracy and treachery. The invaders. Politicians, war makers, conquerors, and revolutionaries. They're a bit similar in terms of their purpose, but I guess warmongers are more about those, uh, I guess, war machines. Those have been kind of made numb by war to, to act as a war unit. And the uh, invaders seem more like, I guess, you know, Manifest Destiny America or something. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about the invaders. We, we know too little about them to really characterize them. And the rulers of these are a guild of judges and arbitrators, and their name is... Technically, this is all spoiler because they've never even mentioned it until now, but I've mentioned it several times. The rule makers. Oji. Kita Ward. Carpenter is the world representative of Kami Kotan, and one of the seven core members of the guild he is part of. Ojimachi Academy and the surrounding area are his home turf. He controls the Ojimachi Academy portal. And this, this hotly contested territory, the true guilds of the East and West clash in perpetual battle for dominance. Corpokura's honor guard of Ojimachi students comprises only young children, yet their cruelty is feared through Ch uh, Ch Tokyo. Without mercy or compassion, they hold dominion over the battlefield. Come, little ones, my leaf will protect you. Cold sky at morning! The name of Corporate Coast Guild, the Guild of the East, is the Rule Makers. There it is. Even the Warmonger's fanatical determination cannot save them here. One by one they fall, but the battle is not yet over. Mmm. From behind the giants appears a newcomer to the battlefield. Another young child. Curses. Why the hell? However, this boy's regal air is anything but innocent as he stares down Corpacur's soldiers. Although he hardly even registers the giants, uh, the sight of this new arrival brings a grim expression to Corpacur's face. Thank goodness, the cavalry has come at last. Tenantoma breathes a sigh of relief upon seeing the Brigade of One. Though countless stars at midnight be tinkling until morn, all will turn their gaze to me when it comes to fiery dawn. Kneel before the sun, solar prayer! The blazing sun the child carries upon his back melts away the frozen blizzards by Kami, of Kami Kotan. This is one of the warmongers' most powerful members, the boy King Tita. Uh, I see, so this is, he's part of the warmongers. Rolled up a of the eternal summer king of Nirai Kanai. Corporal freezes and Tita melts, ice and fire, forever in opposition. Now's the time. Should the sacred artifact clash directly, this battlefield could easily spiral out of anyone's control. I cannot imagine that the East wishes for that any more than we do. The time is ripe. Let us appeal for a, tre a treaty of armistice. Representatives from the East and West come forth and add their signatures to the proposed treaty. Engrave my name on of Horus of the Rule Makers, Royal Representative Aru, unto thee. May this treaty represent an unbreachable accord. Well, they should sign that fast. With this, a new treaty has been forged between the Warmongers and the Rule Makers. We of the East agree to cease hostilities, provided that you of the West supply a satisfactory explanation for your actions. However, know that should the terms of this treaty be breached, my secret artifact will bring the sun's fury and judgment down upon the one responsible. 
The Avis Therian representing the East pronounces the conclusion of the treaty with sacred artifact in hand. Prompting Thanatom and the other advisors to begin paperwork that will bring hostility east to a close. Magnificent work, Counselor Inizaka. It seems like our duties have been taken care of. You have done well for yourself, Yasiori. But another treaty means yet more work for us. Hmm. Thanatom was sighs, thinking of the countless treaties that have been built between the three tree guilds over innumerable loops. It is typical left to advisors such as Tanatoma to check the minutiae, leaving them constantly busy. Now, I'll have the draft response to the East about this breach of our treaty. Hmm? Well, oh well. Not an unexpected development, although one far worse than I had imagined. Tanatoma's face darkens upon seeing an app notification from the southern battlefront. The invaders? Counselor Nusaka, is something wrong? Not the battle with, with the south, is it? While the eastern front has been brought to a ceasefire, the situation in the south has taken a dramatic turn for the worse. The forces of the warmongers have been willed down, and little remains. We always knew that our human wave tactics would be in effect against the deception of the south, but... Armed with the ability to falsify memories, the south had little difficulty turning the warmonger soldiers against them. Hmm. Counselor, I hear that the Penitentia has dispatched General Balor to the southern front. Surely that will... It will correct the balance for now, yes. However, we face long-term problems. We must secure new recruits. Can I trust you with this, Yasiori? As you command, Counselor. I will pay a visit to the Superintendent Daikoku. Daikoku is not merely a police officer. Countless transients have been sold on the Black Knight Breakers through the secret auction. It's... Ooh. He is also the man who had once captured Yasiori and sold him off to Penitentia Academy. Outside of very exceptional circumstances, the three guilds, uh, true guilds cannot freely recruit their own soldiers. For countless loops, they have signed many treaties to facilitate splitting Tokyo into three, and add extents to restricting construction. I will inform Makahala of your visit. Now go! Understood, Counselor. I will depart at once. Yasuori bows and excuses himself, unaware of the soft light radiating from within the orb of Brotherhood inside his pocket, but charms in anticipation for a coming encounter. Tabukicho, Shinji Gord, here, near the portal once controlled by the outlaws. Oh, just Kotlin Poker can really spread himself then, huh? Damn it. Never thought the day would come that I'd be letting outsiders stomp around my town like they own the place. Suzuka pulls down the blinds of Tsukiyomi's club just enough to peek through the grimaces of the outside view. And Grimace is at the inside view. The shadows look just, look just like Tajikara and his friends, don't they? I guess that means the Shinji police have already fallen to the warmongers. An aura of black shadow w wavers agitatedly in Tsukiyomi's right hand, calling out to its co counterparts. You're saying Constable Clueless went and got himself doppelgangered. That fool. I bet he never even saw it coming. He always was too trusting. <laughs> A few cops ain't gonna tip the skills one way or the other. It's not like they're ever on our side anyway. Losing Tetsu Baraki and the old Tanuki is gonna hurt us a whole lot more than they ever could. Now well, then, we made it to nighttime, and that means the time for the guild battles is over. Tsukiyomi, acting guildmaster of the Kabukicho outlaws, sinks deep in thought. Never has he seen shadows show such cohesion, not even when he stood outside and allowed the genociders to overrun the city. After all, there's someone out there with complete control over memories of past loops and the shadows of our defeated selves. Then there may be no limit to the enemy's reinforcements. I know you're the king of the night, but is your night vision working? Who the hell could be controlling that many shadows? Mahakala, the great black one. It must be. Oh, I guess it's not as... Slowly, solemnly, Tsukiyomi speaks the name, and then breaks into a devilish grin. But as Suzuka just kindly reminded us, I happen to be king of the night. Fighting under the cover of darkness is my specialty. I can't just sit by and watch someone get the better of me in my own domain, can I? Besides, I shudder to think what the Queen of Kabikicho would do to me if I didn't take this chance to show him off a little. A.K.A. Ellie, who was just released within the past week. 
Now dressed for nightmare combat, the trio prepare to leave. Tetsuya and Suzuka give Tsukiyomi a meaningful nod. Are we ready? Wonderful. The underground auction house won't know what hit it. The three depart, bound for the underground auction house, uh, where their abducted buildings have been taken. Well, at the end of the day, the reign of the sun ends as well. Night has fallen, and in the battles to come, the moon will rule. Alright, we are here. How much have you run to make it this far? How many battles have you fought to survive this long? Solids of countless memories appear from nowhere on this battlefield to replace scenes from wars past like automatons. You attack, strike, maim, shoot, stab, kill, and in the end, fall like lifeless stacks of flesh. They all fall. But that is not the end. Out of nowhere they repair, hale and hearty, as though their battle just months ago had only been a dream. And you fall again, and again, and again. The end of repetition is all there is. With each new battle, your foes seem a little less like living beings. With each new battle, you feel a little less fear, fear, but you also care a little less about your own life. Repeating over and over, it never ends. Gradually, you lose track of time. Your thoughts become so sluggish that you struggle to remember how you even got here. All you understand is now. Living like a... A war machine. How do you somehow? Master! Master, you can't forget yourself! Master! Remember that none of this is real! There's just visions from that big old dassy Tuscali poke smoke! Oh, thank god you're here, Tess. Uh, it's not Tess. Lil Salmon, thank you! How about some happy little belly rubs? Uh, and so, <laughs> and so, ferocious petting ensues. One so legendary that will be spoken of Tokyo for generations to come. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> Master, I just got so good at this. You haven't been petting any other for my so I'm not around, have you? <sighs> you saved me, little salmon, for real. I'm so glad you're here. I'm, I'm pretty surprised he is here. What, what's with these memories? There's nothing particularly special about the memories this cow Epoch is showing you. They simply never end. The battle repeats over and over, perhaps for eternity. Aside from that, this battlefield is exactly like an apple. Once the slaughter concludes, everything is restored to the way it was, and the battle begins again. This process is enough to strip all of those involved uh, of, of all fear, eventually eliminating their self sense of self-preservation. Was Taurus Master on this too? Maybe all the others saw it too. Shh, Master, look over there! If you gotta see this! What in the... Is that who I think it is? Bathine? Pollux? And the body shot! Wait, are we fighting them? Oh yeah, that's right, they're in the cells. We're not really thinking. Ugh, damn it. We have gotten ourselves into. Anyway, let's do our best. Boking up. No, we're supposed to do fucking bigger. God damn it. Oh, it's starting off somehow. Thank goodness for the coming plus five seeds. <laughs> um, it'll make uh, that first charge a bit more reliable for the eliminating board. Yeah, we got berserk. Everyone got berserk. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, it looks like it's just more battle in the uh, memory. The rules of War 3. The underground auction house can be found deep beneath an empty office building in Shinjuku, quite literally underground. Belly. 
belly. Its entrance, a tiny stairwell, is easy to miss at a glance, but it is nonetheless uh, it nonetheless marks the boundary of a world beyond the normal. Individuals of many different stripes descend the steps with bodyguards in tow. Some of them are board financiers, others are simply dilettantes, and yet others are career criminals. All of them are here for the same reason, to attend the day's auction, where all manner of living live curiosities are up for sale. None of those items could be obtained through conventional means. Many are not even of this world. Even figures as illustrious as Makan Gadungan, the first place ranker of berserkers, have been bought and sold here. And even now, transients with no shelter and nowhere to turn often find themselves under the auctioneer's hammer. Yeah, I'm interested in music. And sold! Let's have a round of applause for our winning bidder. The hammer falls with a sharp whack, and the price is decided. Mm. <laughs> the auctioneer's assistants escort the goods to and from the stage. Again and again, the hammer falls. Now, Tokyo Whites and Transients, the moment you've all been waiting for. Tonight's prize item comes to us all the way from Utopia. They caught Rake? With a grandiose gesture from the auctioneer, the item is qu in question is ushered in, bound hand and foot. Break the straight transient whom the Summoner's Guildmaster met one rainy night in Shinjuku Central Park. During a subsequent battle in Oto Ward, a memory of the Assault sent both him and Obrik Tigre's forces flying through space. The following days saw him captured by associates of the underground auction, and now he has his turn under the hammer. The attendees raise their hands, shout the numbers, and ask, uh, and the asking price soars. The proceedings of the auctions are no current to the Therian, however. Break surveys the room as carefully as he can from his position, trying to move as low as possible. He notes the numbers and positions of the auction's armed guards, all potential cover options, and any possible escape routes. Shit! I'll never make it. I'll have to wait for another chance. I can suffer these restraints easily if I transform. But I won't get far with this many eyes on me. It has gotta come sooner or later. I've just gotta bide my time. And sold! A round of applause for the highest bidder of the night. I did not expect this music to be played here. Meanwhile, at the auction house and trance. Understood. We will take care of the front then. With any luck, we'll be able to rescue both our warrants from this mess. I'll be in touch again if necessary. I'm sure a crafty old crowd like you realizes we outlaws and you police are in this together. Hey! So, we're actually teaming up for once. Although, I guess uh, Hogan was always somewhat cooperating uh, with the outlaws in the, the Clash of Floats event. At least peripherally. In, in the very least, he wasn't like. Directly only like Tajikai was. Sorry about that, Summoners. Now then, shall we hop out of the frying pan and head into the fire? Of course, we're right behind you. Just a moment before going, I'd like to make sure we both know why we're here. We're here to recover our guildmates. We have reason to believe they're being auctioned inside. Let me start from the beginning. Right now, the outlaws are trying to fend off an offensive from the warmongers. We managed to weather the storm for a while, but in recent days we've been raided several times by the police. They arrested many of us. Needless to say, our line has crumbled, and our guildmaster has been effectively paralyzed. For us yet, we've heard nothing from our guildmates since their arrest. An insider we have in the police force tells us. They've been imprisoned in the facility in Narima Ward, and are unable to contact the outside world. Oh, I see. So, so they are at Narima Ward. But the other, you know, 
unnamed uh, allies are trapped here. I'm trying to get it. Do you mean Penitentia Academy? Tsukima smiles and nods, pleased that Chiro is following his explanation so far. Exactly. As we both know, Penitentia Academy is under warmonger control. Well, unfortunately, you and not, I don't have the manpower to mess with matters that far west if you catch my drift. So we're in the market for an alliance with a third party, and would you know it? Here you are. Whatever your reason for trying to get inside Penitentia, I'm sure it's just as pressing as ours. Correct on all accounts! But where on earth did you acquire that kind of information? Well, let's just say that your seniors are better connected than you th might think. <laughs> For example, I might happen to know that you've been spending a, a lot of time with a certain third year librarian. Oh, so he's in cahoots kind of with, uh, you know, Gene Treaton and but most likely just Mononobi. Now, what could you be researching inside our school building? A librarian? Hmm, you mean Furufumi? Don't worry, our mutual friend isn't spelling anything about you behind your back. We just have a connection of sorts. But I'm afraid that's a story we don't have time for. We should get back to business. What matters right now is that we both need to get inside Penitentia Academy. But of course! Well, let me say our side of the story. Shira explains that his gun master infiltrated Penitentia Academy in search of clues about his kidnapped friends, and that after watching his, him engage at the Sally Pokemon Bell, he concluded that he needed more direct support. However, attempting to enter Penitentia, as his guild master did, by getting deliberately arrested would be extremely risky. There's a high, risk, uh, high chance he would end up simply being sent to another facility, unable to help anyone. True. So he has chosen more alive in Glover Tech, joining forces with the outlaws. So this is a rescue operation. I see. In that case, it makes sense that both of our paths would be us here. The underground auction here is the only way of entering Penitentia Academy from the outside. Wait, this underground pathway? Isn't it like a... This is under Shinjuku, right? Isn't that quite far away? Penitentia from the outside. So there might be like a secret underground pathway? <clears throat> Please, excuse my foolishness, but I fear I can't quite follow. What does Penitentia Academy have to do with this auction place? The auction house is both a hotspot for transient trafficking and the warmonger's number one source of new recruits. Transient. What? Unforgivable! Such cruelty can not go unpunished! Well... Oh, so that's how they're getting Neo recruits, I guess. If this is completely, you know, hush-hush from the the other three of the guilds, this is how they are able to conscript new uh, transients without the knowledge of the other uh, three of the three true guilds. Well, I think we can see for ourselves how many talk feels on this issue, but what do you think, Shiro? Honestly. I can't begin to comprehend how anyone could buy and sell living beings at all, let alone so brazenly. Righteous indignation on all counts, then. Of course, I don't condone any of this either. But before we go in, I hope you'll listen to a word of warning from someone with a bit more experience. In the battles to come, that inflexibility will be your downfall. Surely you cannot be telling us to allow villains to go unchallenged. Not at all. What I mean is that by partitioning the world into what is comprehensible, and what is wrong, you have already lost. After all, that is how wars are begun. If you draw a line in the sand, someone will eventually cross it, and conflict will spark. But war is our enemy's home turf, and we can't hope to fight them in their own terms. They're called the warmongers for a reason. I see. If you dismiss ideas as unacceptable or incomprehensible, you will never be able to move forward. And once everything is clearly delineated, the powerless are helpless against the powerful. So, the warmongers, you can have your own sort of opinions on them, but once you start, you know, marking them as, like, irredeemable or, like, cross some line or uh, basically label these kind of actions as somehow different from what, what you can tolerate, then you've already lost because their home territory is really all about crossing those lines and taking advantage of when conflict starts as a result of that. So, I guess he really is saying to play along, or in the very least, uh, not to be so quick to draw the line. The strong defeat the weak. Might makes right in the end. So what do you do if you can't defeat your enemy on their terms? You drag them into your own game, make them play by your rules. Only then will I have a chance at victory. You're just the tip of a jaded third year. But I'd appreciate it if you kept it in mind. Thank you. I know words are wisdom when I hear them. 
Tsuki and Yingling seductively, and Tao's all Shiro's here. <laughs> For now. It's oh wait, I just realized the Shiro's using his anniversary skin. <laughs> Way to reuse assets, that's great. And I'm going to talk it to him, of course. For now. No, just let me handle the dirty work. I don't stay up all night for nothing, you know. Auctions are a clash of strategy and profiteering, but they follow certain rules, and there are ways to gain the upper hand. Make no mistake, this auction house is a battlefield, but fighting was where it's happened to be my specialty. Just sit back and enjoy the show. It isn't every night you get to see the king go to war. What are you gonna do, Sukiyomi? I see you for a good reason. Now let's see you go into action. Meanwhile, inside memory is revealed into Scotty Focus Mirror. This is one long ass memory. Okay, swing, but think better of it. Dodge attack instead. A desperate battle unfolds within this world of endless war. The fierce assault from these three transients you once called friends is relentless, forcing you to stay on the defensive. Stop the Sunbari. If any of them hear you, they show no sign of it. They answer only with showers of merciless blows. They're just like I was before. I'm only an enemy to them. If I go using them, I'm toast. And every one of those strikes, you feel your intention to take your life. A relentless storm beats you and batters your guard until eventually, inevitably breaks. Crap, I'm not gonna make it. Is this the end? In that instant, you see a metallic glint from behind Bathium. You can barely blink before you recognize it as a needle of a syringe, aiming for the backs of your attackers. Naughty children get put to bed without supper. Doctor's order. The three collapse unconscious as Shenong's anesthetic takes effect. Shenong! What are you doing here? Thanks for. See. Blah? What the hell do you think you're doing, Yasin? You had the chance! Why didn't you strike? Shenong's face is the very picture of fury as he corners you against the wall as he capitons you. You'd rather get yourself killed and hurt your friends, huh? That's it! Are you telling me you came all this way just to end up once more a corpse? The battlefield in the place for naive kids who think they can save the world. Folks like you never even make it through the first hour. I thought I told you you don't have any business here. Why can't you just listen to your doctor? Yeah. That's the outlaws. Tetsuox! The battle rages on in this world of memories, without mercy and without end. No, Tetsuox, what about those words he shared with me in Jiangxi Night? What happened? What happened? Well, he has berserk. Hopefully, this is gonna be enough. No. Okay. Fun. Bigger. Bitch, yeah. Charm what? Oh, what? <laughs> All right. Your funeral. Because of you, I get to survive on our turn. Thank you, Yaksha. <laughs> and Chinang's leader's moral support. Yeah, that was close. He told us the remove possibility to actually get crit. Not that it matters. Wow, imagine content that existed, you know, 
Before all the energy. Oh, whoops. Oh, that's Pug. He didn't hear me say Pug. It never happened. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, take uh, these different people for a spin. Goodbye.